going to be uh, that video to hopefully help you as you get ready to prepare to lead, facilitate, uh, teach an on-campus small group that's going to meet on Sunday, uh, September the 25th. So as that's you, you've got the right spot. And to go ahead and grab a couple of things, as we always encourage you to do and get ready for this, is get your Bible, uh, get your uh, something to write with. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and get the um, lesson manuscript printed out. You should have received that as an attachment with this email giving you the video link. Go ahead and get that out in front of you. And, and if you haven't done this, uh, let, me, let me encourage you to do something. Just pause the video right now. Go read through the lesson and kind of take some, some notes or maybe questions that you have. Uh, jot those down. And then let's come back and walk through it together. And hopefully uh, some of the questions or thoughts you have, uh, we will share some of those with you through this video and help maybe clear up some of that or at least give you some other things to think about in that regard. So if you haven't read through the lesson yet, go ahead and do that. I think you'll find that helpful versus just kind of walking through with, with me uh, kind of in a, in a cold, you know, uh, firsthand format there. All right, so you've already read through the lesson. Uh, you got your Bible, you got your manuscript, got something to take a couple of notes with. Let's jump into it. Uh, we're having a great time through this series that we're calling The Love of Christ, and and I don't know about you, but it is really, uh, as one of my professors from seminary would say uh, from many years ago, it's challenging my socks off, all right? It is really challenging me to think through not only how much God loves me and what the love that God has for me, but then how do I respond in love to people around me? And uh, it, it's, a, it's a very uh, encouraging in the sense of understanding God's love, but it's challenging because as followers of Jesus, then we have the responsibility uh, to love in the same way that Jesus loves us. And so uh, that gets really, really gets tough, right? Now, it's fun hearing about how much God loves us. It gets, gets really uh, challenging when we actually love people the same way. So uh, I know you're excited about what's coming up Sunday with the message that will continue on in this series and what you get to share with your small group. So let's go ahead and look at it. We're going to continue out of 1 Corinthians 13. We're kind of doing a study through that passage as we're uh, doing the complimentary lessons with the sermon so that we're all focusing on that one truth for the week and trying to get a hold of that in our own lives so then we can live it out in the way that God has for us. And we're going to continue that uh, on this Sunday, the, the September the 25th. Now, you got your manuscript there. The overview is on page one, kind of gives you a big idea of what we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be contrasting this or, or looking at the concept of how love and truth work together. Uh, one without the other is never a healthy thing. And so we're going to kind of look through that and talk through that there. On page two and three, or excuse me, uh, page, uh, yeah, page two and three, got a little confused there. That's your introduction. <clears throat> and, and again, always the introduction just is a way, uh, gives you something to use as a segue as your class is getting together, as your group is sitting around and visiting and doing all those things that you should do and need to do. Uh, I've noticed that several of you on Sunday mornings enjoy having a time of uh, refreshments or, or snacks and, and getting to, to eat a little bit and to there. So you got to have something to get you back into that, from that into the lesson. This introduction can do that. Uh, if this introduction doesn't fit you, no problem, or doesn't fit your group, then make one, find one that does fit. So it's just a suggestion for you there. But here's what we want to do with the introduction. In the introduction, we want to get down to the aspect of thinking about that phrase, that, that verse, of verse 6 of 1 Corinthians 13, which says, Love does not delight in evil. And getting the group thinking about how love doesn't delight in evil, but it also delights in truth. And starting to think that through, and how does that work? Obviously, God being love, that's who he is, uh, so the only way he can act is in a loving way, means that God doesn't, uh, evil has no, uh, has no place with God. I mean, it doesn't even come, it, it can't, it's the antithesis to who God is. And so because God is love, then evil is the antithesis of who God is and of how God acts towards us and how God responds. So that's why the verse goes on to say, but, Word of contrast, that but there helps us understand that he's contrasting love doesn't delight in evil, but in contrast, love rejoices with the truth. Okay, 
Don't forget that love is, a, is the subject here. Love rejoices with the truth. So love and truth are interconnected. That's the thing you want to get out of the introduction, if nothing else, and to get your group thinking in regards to what we're going to do. Now, in the, te in the lesson this week, we're going to, instead of kind of working our way through a, that passage in 1 Corinthians 13, we're going to take that one verse, 